So, after days of some kind of vicious cold thing that apparently is not COVID, uh, in which I, my personal theory is that God had just had enough for a while and like hit me with a tranquilizer because I was out of everything and was like, hey, everything's fine. Uh, but also I couldn't think and all of my very interesting little threads of pondering just died and stopped for a while and that was not fun and I'm like this is how like most of the people around me think this is terrible it's so boring but um I'm like 60% back And as soon as I get any little bit of energy, I like, desperately shove it into something, and then I run, I wear myself out again, and it's, it's, it's not great. However, I did have a nice time picking back up a hobby that I've been sort of toying with on and off for a couple of years, which is, like, okay, so there's this baby name site, right, called Nameberry. And on their forums, they will have people, not only expecting parents, but also just people who have sort of, as humans do with everything, turned the art of combining names into just an abstracted art form. And I think it's very interesting as an art form, especially for me, who uh, is a writer, because these names are so like concentrated and so distilled and it's like the essence of the artistic process of the writing process of like a poetry and language and also a lot of other patterns of like culture and imagery and such but this is just all distilled into this one the process of just combining like two or three words, names that I like put together. Um, I will give you some examples from my listography. Again, do not worry, I don't intend to name my future children these names. It's purely an art form. However, and, oh right, because then it kind of gets into like world building and <laughs> you, could, you could have book characters, like you could name your kids this way in the right circumstances. Um, at all. Okay. For instance, Araminta Naomi Hummingbird, uh, Felicity Ariella Time, T H Y M E. Most of them are better written out. I'll link my listography in the description. Mm. Rohana Songbird Elise. Oh. Ella and Lilibeth B. Still love that one. Was playing around today with some trying to push my boundaries and see how it is to come back after my mindset has changed <laughs> a little bit. And then I'm just like, um, Annalisa Philida Silver, Eli Ryan Moon, Peyton Theodore Lilac, etc. These are these are my taste. Um, mine tend to be very like naturey and over the top and really I'm trying to push the medium to the limits of its expression um, but there's some that are quite beautiful it's it's just so cool yeah all of the all of the patterns that are coming uh, together in one of these names is just like really good to, in my estimation and then, like, why is it good? And why is it hold together the way that it does? And then, what? And then the process as well of thinking these up and putting them together. And then that those same patterns apply in a lot of different areas. For instance, I'm just gonna go off on a list. Uh, to work my way back into thinking with some low consequence um, putting
putting together ideas. So, okay. Okay. The process is interesting because when I go to have like a brainstorm session, <coughs> this thing has taken me through every possible stage of like congestion and the sore throat and the fatigue, just everything. I'm getting the full experience. Um, but it's sort of like there's a blank. I try to give myself some space, like clear black, like blank space, and then basically just letting the names pop up into my awareness, taking hold of some, seeing what sticks, see what sticks, grabbing hold of one. Like let's say, okay, oh, like. Jillian seems like an interesting name I want to play with, so then you kind of fix that one and then see what else um, pops up and put it together and sometimes letting go of the original one and either sometimes I'm moving very quickly through a lot of different possible names and nothing is just like sticking and sometimes I am quite stubbornly stuck on figuring out one and then there's this meta process running of like, okay, am I going too fast? Should I stick with this one? Should I stick with another one? How do I increase my production weight? I'm not doing this to just, you know, the justification for this is, is partly about the process and what produces the best names if I stubbornly stick to one or if I do, so it's like both layers of analysis running at the same time, as always when I'm doing anything. But that is a very pure form of what happens when I write and I imagine a similar thing holds if you're if you do another kind of art. But I'm not advanced enough in anything else but writing to know what that's like, really. Uh, but it's just like taking the categories and almost holding them, and what happens to stick and what happens to kind of pop up, and then that leads it kind of gets into the issue of where our thoughts come from and. Um, what, yeah, why, why do I think of a certain name? Why do I happen to take hold of that one? Why, like, let's say I'm thinking of uh, a Sophrony, which I think is very pretty, then I'm oh, kind of holding on to that one. Hmm. So it's reminding me of a video on wave function collapse that I just started watching. So it was talking about, like, the Sudoku square, and then how once you fill in one, the rest of them, um, the possibility, first the possibility is your, you can think of it as like infinite of superposition, and then when you fix one, they become limited. So it's sort of like that, I guess, if I take one name, then the rest of them will be uh, constrained and want to be the ones that are attracted to that one. So there's just that. It's quite a fun little distillation of the creative process. And particularly for writing, because that's what you're doing in stories anyway, is just manipulating characters, aspects of characters, and aspects of plot and setting and trying to get them to fit together in the same way. And perhaps, arguably, doing something like this trains those high-level skills of, of just purely that should help with larger story writing. Mm. And then the names, many of the same principles of like poetry apply to, apply to coming up with these little name, name combinations. Mm. Oh, well, first of all, the amount of names, obviously one by itself is like, okay, and then if you have two, there are some two name combos that are nice, like, I think Sophrony Jasmine sounds nice, uh, this, it's, of course, it's, it's all about your taste, whether any of these, um, so, but what, but what you're, what I'm kind of looking for, 
is a name that is, as I was talking about in the sparkling water fountains video, like a gestalt that it holds together while having enough tension and juxtaposition within it to be interesting and unusual and surprising, and just like in any art form. So, like, if I was to say, like, Sophrony, I was really like, okay, Mary Jane, that is not interesting. Like, okay, Mary Jane. That doesn't have very much inherent interest to it. You'd have to put that into a world, have the character's name be Mary Jane. We have some ironic uh, influences with, like, the culture and then have some more external reasons why the name Mary Jane would then have, like, interest to it. But I'm looking in this case because this is just names uh, apart from why we use names. I'm looking for something with inherent meaning. Now this is, I'm thinking about apart from Gödel Escher Bach. Um, where he was talking about that, the like internal inherent structural sort of complexity and meaning in a, in a, in a structure, like in a piece of art say, versus what we bring to it and what we can apply. And that like traditional art, in the day, back in the day, used to have more of the inherent complexity, like a piece by Bach, versus now more modern pieces tend to be more about what we bring to it and like the cultural context. But if you just take the piece in a vacuum, there's less there self contained. But that's a whole other pattern. Mm. So So what I'm looking for is like, yeah, something that, that holds together, like, and it's a, it's a very, like, I can tell viscerally um, what, when it's right. And that's another thing that's interesting because it's kind of like that in the creative process in general, at least in life in general. When something's right, like, you know it. But until then, you're like, ah, getting closer, getting farther away. It's a very simple sense. And especially in this case, when it's not a whole story that's falling into place, or books where you have a lot of moving pieces, but where it's just a couple of words, there's a very distinct sense of rightness where it's like, yes. Um, and it just like feels good. In a very like, <coughs> like visceral way. But you're always playing with that feeling and sort of stretching it and seeing how far, how much tension, how much juxtaposition can I fit into this, this name? Would we even call it a name anymore? Because it's not a, anyway. Um, without it completely falling apart and becoming incoherent. So, so, so a name that I was, so a name that I would say is on like the edge. Going back to the whole idea of Gestalt's, the name that would be on the, Oh, no, that's not. Yeah, it is. We, a name that barely holds together, or that really doesn't hold together, is like Amir Gata Phoenix. I think, to me, I'm pretty tolerant of um, eccentricities. So I'm like, it, it's something, but it doesn't, it's not got enough similarities to like stick. A ton. Mm. But, on the other hand, if you put it in a setting, because this is the other half of the interest of this name thing, is that you can take them by themselves. Okay, I should talk about that later. If you put that name, say if you made a character in a book named Amir Greta Phoenix, it would have to be like a sci-fi book. I think that one was sort of inspired by Ender's Game, which I have been reading the series. Um, then you could justify that name. And because it would have more of the extrinsic meaning, um, because it would be applied to a person and then in a world, and then, okay, you'd probably make the names of the other characters either different, so this one would stand out, or similar in order to give it meaning. So, like, in itself, maybe this name doesn't really hold together like something like um, 
uh, sulfur and jasmine wood or that's not a great example but uh, if you were to give it some more support then they would familiarity makes things all together can we repeat enough or obviously any name that happens to be applied to somebody that you know and love becomes it feels right for them and it just just begins to get little threads of justification and really root itself and feel inevitable and feel right there's a <coughs> thing about the more artsy you get the more you're trying to make that inherent and removed from like the context mm. more intense and I forgot how difficult it is with words, what I can think of properly. Yeah, so intrinsic versus extrinsic meaning, which is, which is relevant especially for names, because usually the point of a name is for a person, but in this case we're removing it and just making it about the sounds of names. But things are never quite in a vacuum, right? Because so much, which just makes it interesting, uh, the process of composition, because so much of the reasons for putting particular names together or the reasons why they might fit and feel right versus not fit and like be too far, um, or the reasons why they might combine to form a particular like mood or character or the best names, I think, the more that you look at them, they sort of coalesce to suggest, yeah, like a certain atmosphere, a certain like mood, something almost like color, like a yeah, something that that uh, set of names is is for for. Spirit is one word. Yeah. Mm. Where was I? All of my la layers of meta are back now, so I'm like. <sighs> Pageant, Theodore Lilac, I chose because of just color associations, which is more of a, okay, words, that are kind of gross, and Lilac obviously is like a major name, but so many, oh yeah, pearl, I guess, so many of the reason why I would be drawn towards a certain name combination is because of the uh, cultural or personal associations that I have with that name. So like if a certain character has a name, Jasper is in this one, and I think that's because of Twilight. And you know, I should just unironically <laughs> defend Twilight. <laughs> I'm quite fond. But yeah, so personal associations, cultural associations, all come into it. And you're, so even though what you're doing in the moment is manipulating very small, it's almost like a haiku, like very few words, because names are such culturally charged objects, what ends up happening is you're, you're sort of holding on to this name and thinking simultaneously on the level of like, hmm, this room, this sound, it's just like so many levels at once, it's fascinating, like, okay, sound comes into it, like, consonants is a lot, or repetition of, of um, consonant or vowel sounds, like internal rhyming is a lot of what might make names stick together. So you're thinking about that and holding that, and there's also 
just surface level associations. Or like say you have a word name like plum or phoenix or lilac in there, which I like too. Then there's the associations of that. Then there's also um, the culture that a word or that, <laughs> that a name comes from or slash time period and all of the kind of feel of that, whether that contrasts or goes with it. Plus the Yeah, plus your own personal associations with that name. And all of those are like the iceberg from the blue. Uh, word that you're trying to find a place for. <coughs> it's quite difficult sometimes. And it's, it's beautiful to see a lot of it comes up to just playing with little variations and trying a lot of things to see what would adjust just enough that you'd almost like feel what something means. It's like not quite. Um, and then for instance, how much of a difference it makes to spell a name, um, say, with like, <coughs> no in a different form, like for instance, like Stephen versus Stefan versus Stefano, mm. Peter versus like Pedro, or even just, or Pietro, or just like a little difference, kind of shifts the tone, etc., etc. And a lot of patterns that are true in language in it. <coughs> just just like this pure form and way to almost have a little petri dish for just all of this in this tiny little space. Um, and I guess it is like haiku, like the proper full haiku, which we cannot find as a non officiant I don't know Japanese culture enough to really be able to, because what that is about is each word and image has so much cultural association behind it that really you're seeing that through the, so it really is like that. It's a, a little bit about number two because, as I was also also started to say, <coughs> okay, I'm glad this is a rambly day. I'm gonna okay. number um, two names, like three seems to be the sweet spot. I have never yet figured out a four name combination that flows inherently without like thinking about, okay, what kind of character would this go with or yeah, giving it some sort of setting to make it hold together. I think of Anidora Kiladra Taliana Isili from the books of Bayer, but again, that's a character and it's in a world and it has a setting. Then you end up sort of imagining such things. Those, they sort of have a halo and like, some of these names, if they're good, will like suggest that and suggest the world and suggest like, a, and that's part of the beauty of them. Mm. That is, yeah, so there is, but, and then two is kind of like, okay, you have some level of contrast, and, but usually I just leave it at two names because I can't, the hardest thing is finding the third bridge name between the two, because finding two is like, okay, but then there's so much constraint, and there's like, it has to match, it has to make an interesting pairing, both with the in the first name, other name, and with the second one. So it has to like fit. And then you can switch the order, which really changes the map, really changes like the rhythm and the sound. And the way that those interact. So it becomes switching out a bunch. And then it's like, which one do you switch? And then it can be difficult to maintain <coughs> the focus. Water, as it to be drinking. Mm. Yeah. Mostly. Giving myself some space because I always think of what I wanted to say after I finish the video. In short, making name combinations is a beautiful very distilled, concentrated, haiku-like 
poetry, like definitely. Um, art form, it's sort of like Tokipono for languages. Just a lot of interest, a little, a lot of interesting patterns, associations, and like parts of the artistic process, etc., packed into a very, very small package. And just so interesting to play with. I was looking for a wider frame to like put these this hobby in because I'm like, okay, I just have these lists of names and like what this doesn't have enough body to feel like it has purpose. I don't know. Maybe if I had like a bunch of rocks that I needed to name. Or a bunch of pets. I don't know. But it's cool. If you are a very specific type of person. You will probably have fun on the Mayberry Forums for listography. <laughs>